We are in Croydon and we have a beehive in this asbestos wall. Obviously, same as always, I don't remove the asbestos. We have Adrian um, from Australian uh, Asbestos Rem uh, Audits Australia. Asbestos Audits Australia, there we go. On. Um, but he doesn't just do uh, audits, he pulls, removes and safely disposes of asbestos. Uh, so my nine people that follow me, you now know who to contact for asbestos relocations. <laughs> uh, but anyway, here we go. We'll get some cracking and see what we find. For those that are interested. There's the top of the hive. It's got a fair whack of honey in it. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> okay. And Adrian now has this special sheeting off. And this is what we're looking at. Nice, nice big hive. So we'll get it into a hot box and then we'll make a stand so they can uh, reorientate to the new box. They are a little bit aggressive, um, not aggressive, defensive, but they're starting to calm down. We like lit the smoker and put some smoke in. It's not often we actually have to light the smoker, but they we're getting a little bit upset. Awesome. We've got a couple of piles forming over on the wall there and something under the cover there. Fun so, times ahead. That, oh, yep, we have Adrian and he's got some bees on him. They're, I think they've stopped trying to sting him. He's got a couple of stings in there. I don't know why they've gotten so upset. Maybe he's wearing some sort of deodorant. Um, yeah. That could be some deodorants and perfumes have attack pheromone in them. Um, so I was rather surprised when the calm hive started to focus all their attacks on Adrian because they're leaving me alone. <laughs> so, but it's all good. A um, couple of stings in him, but he's still alive, so we're good. Uh, <laughs> and we're almost halfway. Up on the hive, the, we have three and a half frames of brood. I'll put a spacer in because those two are really thick and there won't be room for the bees if I don't have a spacer. The water pipe is con was connected to something at the back and so there's now a hole in the wall. That's all good because this place is getting demolished. Uh, hence why the bees are coming out. Um, but I will have to make sure Queen doesn't escape into that, that cavity. <laughs> Um, yeah, so within a few days of this hive being pulled out, this whole building will no longer exist. Fun times. Okie dokie, so we had a thunderstorm go through, which was definitely no fun. Uh, but at least the bees are in the box. Queenie had run all the way up the top there on the right. And she's now here in the cage. I'll put her in the hive. I'm not going to mark her up with a pink dot like I normally do, solely because all my marking equipment's wet and I don't want to uh, get her drenched. So we'll put her in the box, put her on the stand I've made. Uh, I was standing on that to get to the queen so I know it's strong enough. I'll sweep a bunch of bees into the box and then walk away and they'll sort themselves out. So, because of the rain, the bees were all clustering up, so I had to give them a good smoke uh, just to get them into the air so that they'll then come land back where the hive is, which has resulted in them us having bees fanning at the entrance. So, fingers crossed, that's enough to get them moving and go into the box. But usually if it rains during a relocation, it ends up meaning the hive needs to stay here for a couple of days. But we'll play that one by ear after. We don't have to. Okay, we're back. We've got some bees underneath. And we've got a big cluster of bees there. 
hasn't gone entirely to plan. Still got these going in there. Well, mostly to plan. So I'll scoop the bees that are here in a cluster and then wait a bit longer and see what happens.